Would you like to travel and see new places and get paid while you do it and practice your passion for cooking and baking? Well, if this sounds exciting to you, you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video where I show you personal experiences that I have done just that. Hi, I'm Ron, and thanks for clicking on this video. And if you're new here, please take a moment and click the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it, as that helps me build my channel, which has many more videos I hope you'll also watch. Okay then, let's begin. Okay, here on my little cheat sheet, I've got the items I want to cover in this video, which are the six cooking experiences that I'm going to share the compensation I received at each one, cooking skills I needed, responsibilities I had, and how I got the job. After I go through these six different cooking experiences, I'll share with you the minimum cooking skills needed if you want to pursue a job in the cooking travel industry. And lastly, some suggestions how you can get a cooking job as well. So the first one, is Royal Tyne Outfitters in Montana. And actually this is the one that I paid to go to. The other five I received compensation for. But this one, it's important. It kind of lays the foundation of my undertaking and it actually led to some of my cooking jobs I later received. So Royal Tyne Outfitters is a husband and wife team, Cody and Laurie Henson up in Montana and the, um, in spring and early summer, they run a cooking and guide school. Cody instructs anywhere from six to eight students on how to be hunting guides, while at the same time, Lorraine is giving a cooking school. She offers two courses. One is a four-week vacation cooking class, and then the other is an extensive two-week cooking course designed to prepare you to be a cook in the outdoor industry and I've attended both of them uh, one one summer and one the following and then subsequently went back as a volunteer uh, for a short period and, and two separate summers just to help out cooking um, at their camp. It's a wilderness camp no electricity uh, no running water um, people stay in canvas wall tents. Lurie primarily cooks with cast iron Dutch ovens so you'll I highly recommend their school. You'll, you'll um, learn a great deal about cooking with cast iron Dutch ovens. So that was, that was my first uh, cooking experience I wanted to share with you. I learned a lot from going there. Um, so the first one I got compensated at was an outfitter in Idaho. You actually drive to uh, Star Valley, Wyoming, and then you uh, drive to the trailhead and then horseback ride into Idaho, uh, on the Idaho-Wyoming border, you ride into their camp. It's a canvas wall camp, the uh, cook tent, uh, all, the, all the tents there are, are canvas wall tents, cook tent, guys tents, guests, cook, etc. I actually slept on a bunk in the, in the cooking tent. My compensation was about $100 a day plus tips, and at this camp I would cook breakfast and dinner. So the hunters would get up, I would fix them breakfast, they'd be gone all day, and then when they returned in the evening, I would fix them dinner. Uh, my responsibilities uh, didn't have any outside of just cooking. Uh, we had um, no, no electricity, no running water. We got our water from a nearby uh, creek running through the area. So even the, the wranglers that were in camp, they would take the buckets and go get water for me and bring back to camp that I would use in my cooking. How did I get the job? I actually sent out, or actually, and, and this time I, I'd contacted personally a, ha a handful of uh, outfitters and, and guides and uh, looking for a job, and they had passed my name along to this outfit in Idaho, and uh, so he called me and uh, offered me the job, and I took it, and I cooked for him two different hunting seasons. So I still had a regular job, eight to five, you know, 40 hour work week, so I could only go up for about a week or 10 days um, to cook during my vacation time that I had at work. But it was a neat experience. Um, 
uh, it's just really pleasurable to prepare food and have the your guests be so appreciative, give you tips and tell you how wonderful the food is. And that was my first paid cooking job. And uh, it just uh, fueled the fire. Wanted to do more of it and, uh, and continue to pursue it. Let's see, the next one. Okay, so I retired from my full-time employment in 2017. And I contacted uh, Royal Tyne Outfitters in Montana and said, you know, in the spring, it's like February, March, something like that, that uh, I was going to be retiring on June 30th. And I was looking for a cook job uh, that summer or even into the fall. And uh, Ray told me she had heard that there was a, a hunting outfitter in Colorado who was looking for a cook. And so I contacted him. And he actually runs three uh, hunting camps and. Uh, so anyway, we visited and he hired me and I cooked for him in 17, 18, 19, 20. So I cooked four years and this coming fall will be my fifth year cooking for him. So the pay um, is, is part from the, uh, the outfitter and then part from the tips. And I average around $1,000 to $1,200 a week. And I usually cook anywhere from six to 10 weeks per hunting season. Cooking skills. So this is primarily elk hunting and um, I cook breakfast and dinner. The hunters get up, uh, I make available to them uh, coffee and donuts and pastry or something like that. They'll have just a little snack before they go out uh, hunting in the morning. When they come back around 10, 11 o'clock, that's when I fix them breakfast. The evening is kind of the same way. They leave around four or five, go hunting. When they come back that evening, that's when I fix supper. I don't fix a lunch, but I make lunch uh, items available. I'll have bread, lunch meat, mayonnaise, ketchup, lettuce, tomato, etc. So they're kind of on their own for lunch, but uh, I make the, 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 the items available that they can fix their own lunch. So breakfasts are typical, what you would expect in a honey camp, pancakes, waffles, biscuits and gravy. Uh, dinners or roast, steak, chicken. Um, responsibilities other than cooking. So this is uh, this camp is actually you drive to it, but it's a pretty rough road. Uh, you need a pickup, and sometimes, uh, depending upon the weather, you may even need a four-wheel drive to get there. But um, so the the hunters come in and they hunt for five days, and it varies from year to year. But let's just assume they come in on a Sunday night. They would hunt. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they would leave Saturday morning. So when they leave, I strip their bedding. They stay in rustic cabins, but they do have uh, nice beds with you know mattress and sheets. So I strip the bedding, pillowcases, towels, and I take those into town and drop them off at the laundromat. And I pick up laundry that I dropped off the previous week, take it back to camp, and make uh, the beds with you know fresh fresh linen uh, for the new hunters coming in. Also, while I'm in town, I do all the grocery shopping. So I have a company credit card and I buy all the, the groceries for the coming week. Uh, how did I get the job? Um, so that was a referral from um, Royal Tyne Outfitters and then my, my personal interview with the owner. So Royal Tyne Outfitters, uh, because of their guy school, their cooking school, they are contacted lots of times by uh, people in the industry who are in need of a cook or a wrangler or a guide. And they say, hey, we need somebody for such and such a time. Can you recommend anybody? So my, my association with Royal Tyne Outfitters has been very beneficial. And they were instrumental in me in getting this, uh, this job in Colorado. Uh, the next one is a, a tourist lodge up in Alaska, actually about 30 miles north of the Arctic Circle. So one evening when I was getting ready to go to bed, I checked my emails and again, Royal Tyne Outfitters had received an email um, requesting a recommendation for a cook for just three weeks. And they had forwarded the email on to various people and I was one of them. So the very next morning I called uh, this lodge, this tourist lodge up in Alaska and said, I can be in Fairbanks tonight. And the owner says, book your flight. So uh, I flew uh, Alaska Airlines through Seattle onto Fairbanks and I think going up the ticket was a little less than 200 bucks and coming back was a little more. Uh, I spent the night 
and Fairbanks, and the next day I flew on to the, the lodge. I paid my own plane ticket to get to Fairbanks, but the, uh, the owner of the lodge, where I would be cooking for three weeks, paid for my, uh, my motel room in Fairbanks, as well as my flight from uh, Fairbanks to the lodge. Uh, I was paid, well, I was paid uh, $10 an hour, plus tips, plus a bonus. I think uh, in the middle of my three week stay, I had a couple of days off where there were actually no guests in the lodge. And then I didn't, it wasn't not a full three weeks. I think it was like 19 days it worked out to be or something like that. And I made around, everything together was around $2,500. But I, you know, I would have gone for nothing. I just loved the experience. It was just, was, I'd never been to Alaska before, uh, to be there and uh, to cook. Um, in the winter, uh, the lodge offers uh, snowmobile touring, dog sled touring, and then uh, Northern Lights tours. And the people that come there uh, um, pay for the lodge and the three meals a day, and then uh, the, the touring is, uh, well, the dog sledding and the snowmobile is extra. Um, the Northern Lights, I, I doubt they paid extra for that. It's just driving to a convenient location to, to see the Northern Lights. But what a great experience uh, that was. So uh, my cooking skills, um, pretty much typical breakfast, dinner type things. Now, most people who came to the lodge would only stay one night, two nights, maybe three nights. And so they, their dinner menu consisted of four separate items. They were um, steak, chicken, salmon, uh, I forget the other one, but you just rotate through those four things. And uh, so cook those four things and that, that took care of dinner. Uh, seldom if ever was anybody there longer than four evenings. And then breakfast, uh, they chose from a menu of about 10 different items. They could have anything on the menu and as much as they wanted. And you just fix whatever they checked off. And it consisted of uh, French toast, pancakes, waffles, reindeer sausage, eggs, of course, hash browns. Um, responsibilities other than cooking. That Cooking was all I had to do. So I, I would get up in the morning and I would fix breakfast. When breakfast was over, I would start the lunch. I wouldn't have to finish it or serve it. Um, once I got it started, then I, w I was off until that evening when I'd come back and fix the evening meal. So typically I would start a, a chili or a soup or a stew or have the items left out for um, cheese sandwiches or something like that. And uh, the staff would uh, prepare and serve lunch. So it was a husband and wife lodge. They were from the lower 48. They had moved to Alaska, they had bought the lodge, and uh, they had a family emergency down in the lower 48. So typically the, the wife would run the lodge, the husband would do the cooking, but she had gone uh, back to the lower 48, so he stayed and, and needed some help. So he ran the lodge and I did the cooking. It was just the neatest, neatest experience. One of, one of the fun things about the, the Alaska lodge was there was a, a ham radio or walkie-talkie of some sort in the uh, in the kitchen area. The kitchen area was right adjacent to the uh, the owner's office with an open door so we could hear each other's uh, business or doings and every once in a while you hear over the loudspeaker. Uh, this uh, bed, uh, lodge, this is um, Cessna 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I need some gas. So the owner would get on the horn and say, uh, when will you be here? And he'd say, well, 10 minutes and okay, well, I'll meet you at the pumps. And so just like you and I, when we're low on gas in our car, we pull into a gas station, fill it up and drive off. Well, there all the commuting is done by plane. So a plane will fly in, land on the ice runway, taxi over to the gas pumps, fill it up and pay and fly off. It, it was just kind of the neatest experience. Uh, also got to go on a, a dog sled ride, which was really, really a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, next is, um, oh, how I got that job. Uh, oh, I got that job from uh, uh, the, the email from uh, Royal Tyne Outfitters. Okay, so the next one is a, a, a dude ranch where I cooked just this last summer, summer of 2020. 
And uh, so I was paid an hourly wage, a 40 hour work week. I was paid $14 an hour, works out about $2,400 a month, and plus tips, which usually run in a month, maybe five, six hundred dollars a month, something like that. Uh, so there I would cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Although I had an assistant. I was the head cook. I had an assistant cook. So typically I would either fix breakfast and lunch and the assistant would cook dinner or I would cook uh, lunch and dinner and the assistant would cook breakfast or, you know, some combination of that. So I wasn't cooking all three meals all the time. Plus I had two days a week off. Um, and breakfast consisted of typical breakfast items, pancakes, waffles, breakfast sandwiches, um, dinner was, I, I pretty much had my choice of the different things. There was no kind of mandatory thing. Um, so ham, brisket, chicken, Lunches would be soup, sandwiches, sometimes hamburgers. So breakfast it would be served for the group as well as dinner. Lunches sometimes maybe the, the guests would be, uh, uh, this was a typical what you'd experience at Dude Ranch. So uh, they would go off on whitewater rafting. If they did, I would make them sack lunches to take with them. Sometimes they'd be gone on an all day horseback ride. Again, they'd take sack lunches with them. Uh, they're only going to go for half a day and then come back and then maybe ride in the afternoon and they'd have uh, lunch at the lodge. Responsibilities outside of uh, cooking. But really I had none except I did some of the shopping. So on one of my days off I would drive into town and buy groceries either with my own credit card that they would reimburse me or use a company credit card and then um, we also had a Cisco truck would deliver items once a week to the dude ranch. So uh, all I did was cook other than I did some food shopping. And how did I get that job? So what I did was uh, I sent out uh, letters to various dude ranches uh, telling a little bit about myself and telling them I was seeking an, uh, an employment opportunity. And this was uh, summer of 2020. I actually had three different opportunities and, and I chose the one I did. And it was a wonderful experience. Uh, not only did I get to cook and bake, which I love to do, but also I could go horseback riding, I could go whitewater rafting. So other people are paying, you know, the guests are paying to be there. I get paid to be there. Plus I get to do all the fun things the guests get to do for free. Okay, this brings us to our last cooking experience, which was cooking at a working cattle ranch. They ran about uh, 400 cows, 400 calves for a total of 800. Plus they raised their own horses. They had a stream of about 200 horses. And in addition to be a working cattle ranch, uh, it was also a dude ranch. So people, uh, dudes or guests would come stay a week and uh, do the work of the ranch. Men, fences, brand, Cas, uh, etc. So my my cooking responsibilities, or actually, let me my compensation first. Uh, I was paid sixteen hundred dollars a month uh, plus tips, and uh, I was responsible uh, for all three meals a day. I was the only cook there. I'd cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, lunches, um, maybe a third to a half of the time were sack lunches that they'd take with them because they. We'd uh, ride horses out into the various pastures and uh, mend fences, brand cattle, give them shots, etc. And so they'd be gone all day. Uh, in the morning I'd fixed uh, uh, typical breakfasts, pancakes, sausage, eggs, hash browns, oatmeal, get coffee ready, hot chocolate for evening. Uh, this particular uh, job I had, they actually had three required uh, uh, dinner items each week. Um, so they were, the steaks were every Friday night and then two other nights during the week I'd have to cook um, what they called frickin' chicken, which is 
uh, chicken tenders rolled in um, an egg wash and uh, then rolled in a crushed up uh, Ritz crackers and, and then baked. Frick, they call it frickin' chicken. And the other one was uh, Indian tacos or sometimes referred to as Navajo tacos. It's a, it's a fry bread that you make and then you pile all the fixings on top of it. It's really, really good actually. Uh, the other evenings I was free to cook whatever I wanted. A ham, brisket, roast, etc. And so in this particular um, ranch, they, they ran the same schedule every week. The gifts would always come in on a Sunday evening arriving around 8, 8.30 p.m. And then they would be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they'd leave bright and early Saturday morning some uh, by 7 o'clock, no later than 8. And I didn't do any grocery shopping, so uh, one of the staff would take uh, the guests, if they had flown in, they'd, they'd drive them back to the airport, do all the grocery shopping in town, and then bring the new guests back to the ranch with groceries uh, for the coming week. And um, so it was, it was a really neat experience. I got to, uh, sometimes if, the, if the, the riders or the guests were out, working in the ranch and sometimes they wouldn't take a lunch but we'd drive a, a, a lunch out to them. So I got to go out on um, the plains and uh, watch them corral up the, the calves and, and doctor them and, and uh, brand them and all of that. That was really uh, kind of a fun experience. Um, so didn't have any other responsibilities uh, other than cooking the meals. Uh, someone was assigned to uh, take care of the dishes and the cleaning of the kitchen area. So that concludes my uh, the, all these work experiences I wanted to share with you. Uh, just to wrap this up, let me go through two other items. One is if, if you're interested in being a, a cook in the in the ranch um, dude ranch industry or a lodge or something like that, and you want to travel around and see new territories, it would be important for you as a cook uh, to know how to cook steak. You need to know the difference between medium rare and medium well and, and how to cook those and, and have them turn out perfectly every time. You'll need to know how to make gravy. Um, a, a white gravy in the morning for biscuits and sausage gravy, you'll need a, new, a white gravy in the evening and a brown gravy goes with roast or a white gravy with a chicken fried steak or something like that. But you'll need to know how to make gravy. Uh, you'll make uh, biscuits and bread from scratch, oftentimes. Um, usually the only flour you'll have access to will be all-purpose flour. Probably won't have any self-rising flour or bread flour. Uh, you'll need to know how to make uh, or cook or prepare chicken, um, whether it's uh, skillet fried or deep fried or baked or something, but uh, be competent and comfortable cooking chicken. Uh, be able to make um, roast, either a chuck roast or a rump roast, but uh, prepare a, a delicious, succulent, tender roast. And you need your own uh, repertoire of recipes. Now I, I keep my recipes on a laptop computer, which I take with me, and then I've got it backed up on a couple of thumb drives, but I've got about 600 recipes. Uh, desserts, breads, pies, soups, salads, etc. And what's this other one? Oh. Uh, unique to you. You need, you need to kind of develop some things that are, are unique to you. That they're not necessarily common food items, but something you're, you're really good at, people will really enjoy. For example, at this working cattle ranch, the people would always come in Sunday evening, and um, the owner wanted me to have something, them, something light for them to eat. So I always fix uh, white bean, chicken chili, and artisan bread. I'd have that ready for them. And the, the white bean chicken chili is kind of unique. A lot, a lot of people, it's the first time they've ever eaten it and uh, always got lots of compliments. And the artisan bread, which is the, the bread that's hard and crusty on the outside, but soft, tender, inner crumb. And invariably what would happen is I, I would give that, I serve that to them on a, a Sunday evening when they got there. Then during the course of the week, uh, they would always be asking me, hey Ron, you know, remember that, the, that bread you uh, served that first night we got here? Could we have that again? Or can you show me how to make that? Or that was really good. How'd you do that? Etc. So, um, you know, that was kind of something unique that they're not, oftentimes we're not accustomed to getting. Another is um, biscuits and sausage gravy, which is uh, pretty common in a hunting camp. 
And so I kind of pride myself in making really good uh, biscuits and uh, sausage gravy. And that, you know, that always went over well and it was kind of unique and um, the way I prepared it and, and it, was, it was always well received. The last item I want to cover is um, oh, how, how to get a job. So a couple of ways that I share, there's lots of resources online uh, to get jobs in the cooking travel industry. And you know you can research those, those on your own. I'm not gonna cover them here, but two areas that I did do. One was um, uh, I did mailer. So each year I would send out about 20 letters from, to various places that I was interested in working. And the letters consisted of, uh, of three eight and a half by 11 pages. One of the pages was a list of the place I'd worked, the resume. Um, would include uh, names, address, phone number, email, and I would always contact the, the place I'd work and get their permission to use them as a reference. So, so one page would be a reference page. Another page would be a collage of various pictures showing me performing cooking tasks. So it would show me over a stove stirring gravy or on a, um, a horse riding show that I could, I could get into a camp um, holding a, a pineapple upside down cake that I'd bake, standing outside of a, of a canvas wall tent, etc. cetera. Just a, just a collage of various pictures of me in the setting for which I was trying to apply for a job. And then the, the last page was just a letter of an introduction explaining who I was and uh, some of my skills and why I wanted to cook for them, etc. So I would send those out and invariably I'd get one or two calls um, offer me a job. Like uh, last year, I got three job offers for the summer and, and took one of the three. Um, the other way you can get a job is there's association. So like there's a, <clears throat> a dude ranch association. There's a outfitters and guide association. Bed and breakfast association. If you contact these associations, more than likely they'll be happy to put your resume on their web page in the classified section where hundreds, if not thousands, of the empl potential employers will see that. So that's, a, a, that's another uh, good source for employment opportunity. But just be aggressive. And if you're just starting out, I would take any job you could get, regardless of the pay, until you've worked at two or three different places, then you kind of build up um, a resume where you've got some references and then you can be a little bit more choosy and demand more money. But, it, but it's, it's worth it. Uh, in my opinion, uh, regardless of the compensation. You, you have no expenses. Your food is provided for you, your housing provided for you. Uh, you, you literally can you know, have no expenses. Uh, oftentimes, if not always, the laundry is provided. I mean, you can, they have a uh, washer dryer, you can do your own laundry. And uh, so whatever compensation you get, uh, you can just bank. And so it's, it's not easy to accumulate a, a fair amount of money. So, uh, you know, I've just kind of been rambling through. I hope I've given you a flavor of what it's like to cook uh, at a lodge, a hunting camp, uh, an outdoors type situation. And I could go on and on and on and talk for hours about it. I'm, I'm really passionate about it, I'm really excited. And I'm gonna leave my email at the bottom of the, uh, this video. So uh, you can email me with any specific questions. I'll be happy to talk to anybody. Uh, about the opportunity, but it's just something that I've been doing the last few years that I wish I would have known when I was younger. You know, I could have traveled the world and, and being paid to do it, and, and, uh, and I, I'm passionate about cooking and baking. I love to do that. So thanks for watching. Please uh, remember to click the subscribe button and uh, make it a great day.